Hello, Mr. Andy here. Uh, we're going to take a look today at our geometric construction project that we do because um, uh, it's quite confusing and it's quite complicated because uh, each one is different. Um, so I'm going to take a very fast run through uh, some of these geometric construction problems and uh, show you the solution. Um, so to begin the assignment, first of all, it says for assignment 05 uh, this semester, um, to use an uh, AutoCAD template and click on the Browse button. Well, guess what? There's no Browse button anymore, so we'll fix that. But we're going to navigate to the T drive to find the template. So let's take a look at that right off the bat. I'm going to start a new part or new file. And it's not one of these templates. It's a special template that we have created for this assignment. So I'm going to go to the T drive, which is the support drive right there. And then classes, and then 101, and the geometric construction template is the one that we want to use for this assignment. And we'll click open. This starts us off in a new drawing using the information that we've provided uh, in this drawing file. And I'm going to scroll down and let's zoom up here. And each one of these assignments is going to require you to uh, perform some geometric construction project. One other thing to note, I'm going to bring the assignment back in here. Before you get started, it says set your object snap to end, node, and center. I would also include their intersection. Again, we'll clean this up. Um, so let me show you how to do that. To set your snap modes, take your mouse and come down and click on this button right here. Right click on that button. And um, it's very hard to tell what is turned on and off. The color scheme in AutoCAD does not give us a good, a good show here. So this button is turned on. You can see it's got a very faint blue outline around it. Intersection is currently turned on. Center is currently turned on. And endpoint is currently turned on. I'm going to turn on the node option. Again, I'll right click on that. I want to look at that and make sure it's on. And you can see node has kind of a blue highlight around it now. That's going to allow us to snap to points like you see right here, point D. Um, that's a point in AutoCAD. I'm actually going to skip over these first couple of, of squares because these ones are fairly straightforward and you shouldn't have too much trouble with them. I'm going to slide over here to the bisect angle uh, assignment. And it wants us to bisect angle EFG. Um, if I were doing this with paper and pencil, I would take my compass. I'm going to use the circle command. I put the point of my compass right there on F. I'm going to snap to that endpoint. So make sure you get that little green square that you see there. And then I'm going to draw a circle, uh, just a random distance. So I've got a circle now. And I think you would agree with me that the distance to here and the distance to here is equal. Um, so these two points are equidistant from point F. I'm going to draw another circle. I'm going to pick this intersection. And instead of defining a radius, if you look in the command prompt, it remembers the diameter of the last circle. And anytime you see these angle brackets that you see down here where my mouse is, anytime you see those angle brackets, if I hit enter, that's what I would get. So I'm going to hit enter, and I'm just going to get a circle exactly the same size as this one. And I'll do that one more time. I'm going to do a circle from this intersection, and I'll hit enter to get another same size circle. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Now if I connect a line from this intersection back to F, that will be an exact bisector of angle EFG. I'm going to take that line. Uh, that's my finished. So I'm going to put that on the object layer. So it's a nice bright white line. It'll plot a little heavier when you do your output. All right. For HJK, I'm going to do a circle again. I'll start here. I'll just go up part way. I'm going to draw a line from the intersection to the intersection. And then I'm going to draw another line from J. And I need the midpoint of that line, but you'll notice I can't get that to snap because I don't have it turned on in my snap modes. 
So I'm going to come up here, click on midpoint right there, and pick that line. Again, let's zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to skip this one. You should know what to do with this one and this one from lecture. So I won't, I'm not going to show you those. I'm going to leave that to you to figure out. So we're going to move over here to the OG curve. I'm going to trim away this piece of circle here. I want to get that out of the way. So let's kick the trim tool on. And we'll hit enter. And we'll just slice away some of that circle just to get it out of our path. We'll zoom up a little closer. An OG curve will give us an arc in here, about where my mouse is moving, and then an arc in here. And it'll give us kind of a continuous curve here from A to D. Okay? The way that we construct that, it is in your book, but I'm going to show you here on screen. I'm going to, uh, I need a parallel line to this one through the midpoint right here, and another one through the midpoint right here. So I'm going to offset. The offset command can either have a distance or through as its option. Um, and I want through. That is the default, but uh, I get in the habit. I just type T when I want through and hit enter. I'm going to pick this line, and then wherever I click, that's where it's going to drop the, the offset line. Well, I need to do it right through that midpoint. Again, I'm not getting that snap, so I'm going to go up and click on midpoint and touch that line. As soon as that triangle that you see there lights up, you can click and it'll snap right through that midpoint. I'll pick this line again, I'll click on midpoint, and I'll touch that line and click and it'll snap through the midpoint. Now to find the center points for the two arcs, I need a line from here straight down to here. I'm just going to go a little past. And I'll take a line from C straight up a little beyond. Make sure you're getting that polar snap at 90 degrees there. And the centers will be this intersection right here and right here. So I'm ready to draw a circle. I'm going to click on circle by radius. I'm going to click this intersection for my center point. And the circle has to pass right through point D, that intersection right there. So I'm going to get my mouse right on that intersection and click. And then I'm going to do another circle from this intersection through point D. All right, I have everything I need now. First of all, I'll take these, and I'm going to take these two lines and put them on the object layer. And now I need to trim this up. So let's zoom up just a little bit closer. I'm going to go to the Trim tool. And I'll hit enter. I'll do this kind of the hard way. I'll take out all the pieces. And then I'm going to have to zoom way up here because I need to get rid of that piece and that piece. And there we have the solution. So this is the OG curve. Okay? All right. Dividing a space in equal increments is our, is our assignment for this one. So divide the space between the parallel lines into five equal spaces. I'm going to draw a line, kitty corner, from end point to end point. And then we're going to use the divide command. There's no button for it up here. Um, so I'm just going to type divide. Okay, so down here in the command prompt I've typed divide and I'll hit enter. It says select the object to divide, so I'll pick that line. And then it asks for how many segments, and I'll say five. And it gives me five points or nodes along that line. Technically, I could delete that line now. I don't even need to be there. And now again, I'm going to offset through. So I'll go offset. Through is what I used last time. I'll just hit enter to keep it the same. I'll pick this line, and then I'm going to put my mouse on that point and click, pick, click. As soon as that little circle appears on the node, you can click. And there's the solution. All right, a couple others here that I'm going to show you. These will be the last two that I'll show you. The first one is constructing a parabola, given the focus point A and the directix B, C. Okay? Um, and an offset distance of point 0.1, and you're going to offset 10 times. We want you to use a spline curve. We're actually going to use a, f a fitted curve. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. 
So the first thing I need, I need a line from A to B, C, a horizontal line. So I'm going to construct a line here. From there, straight across, make sure that polar snap is on, and I should get that intersection right there. Now, the first circle that I need will start at A and go through the midpoint of that line. So I'm going to click on Circle from point A, and I need the midpoint of that line. So I'm going to come up to midpoint, touch that line, and click. The first line that I need is also through that intersection right there. So I'm going to offset through, pick this line, and pick that intersection. Okay. Now I'm going to change this circle to the given layer. I'd like it to be green. It'll just make things a little easier to see when I work. Now I need to offset 10 times out on the circle and 10 times over on the line. I'm going to do the circles first, and I'm going to zoom up a little closer. I'm going to go to the offset command. I'm going to put in a distance again of 0.1 that was in your instructions, and hit enter. I'm going to click the circle and go way out and click. Now I have two. Click and go out and click. Make sure you get your mouse out. And make sure you don't put your mouse on a piece of geometry because it, it'll grab an endpoint or something. So now I have one, two, three, four new ones. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's my actually 11 circles. And if you're in Mr. Mann's class, he may tell you to, to end up with 10 circles. It, it's fine either way, 10 or 11. Um, uh, it'll work for me. So uh, for the line, again, I'm going to click, go to the right somewhere and click. Click. Three, four, five, six, seven. Be very careful you don't get your mouse on the circle. It'll grab it instead. So make sure you're just clicking on the line. Eight. Make sure that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'll hit enter. All right, now I have all of my construction geometry and I'm ready to create that curve. You can if you follow the book instructions you could use the polyline command and put it in there and then you have to edit it to fit it. I'm instead going to come up here and click on the draw drop down right there and click on the spline fit command. That'll, that'll give us a nice curve right off the bat. Alright, I'm going to zoom way up so we can see what's going on. I'm starting out here at the very first or outer intersection. It's the rightmost outer intersection. And I'm going to click there. Then I'm going to go in a circle and left a circle or a line to get to that next intersection. In and left. In and left. In and left. And we'll keep going in and left. Uh, it gets a little confusing as you get here to the curve, or to the edge of the circle. So in and left, in and left. I'm going to scroll up again. In and left, in. And when I go left, look where it takes me. It takes me right down to here. Okay. Now I'm going to pan up again. Now I'm going to go out and right, out and right. out and right and we'll keep going outward and right and you'll know everything's good if you end up at that last intersection if you've got one more circle or one too few circles or one more line or too few lines that means you missed an intersection somewhere and then I'll just hit enter one time and it's put in for me a fitted spline there I'm going to just click on it and we'll put that on the object layer and that turns it back to a, a solid bright white line there. So that's our parabola. Okay. Lastly, uh, let's look at creating an Archimedes spiral here. So we need a spiral around the center here. And this circle is our first circle using an offset distance of 0.1. Offset 10 times again. And again, we're going to use that 
that fitted uh, spline instead of the p-line command. I'm going to zoom up just a little bit on this. I'm going to offset first, so offset, point 0.1 again. I'll pick and click, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I need a line. I'm going to switch to the given layer. I want a line at zero degrees. And I'm just going to come out past the edge a little bit. Now, what I'd like to do is pattern this line so I have a line every 30 degrees. And that's just an arbitrary number, but that's one we're going to use. Um, so I'm going to do an array. An array creates a pattern of geometry. It can be rectangular or polar. Um, so I'm going to come up here to the array button. It's right here. I'm going to click on the down arrow and I would like a polar array. I'm going to pick this line. Oops, I've done that wrong. Let's try that again. I'll pick this line first. I'll do a polar array. It's asking me for a center point and I'm going to pick the center right there. Now, it brings this dialog up, so don't be fooled by what you see here. It's not done yet. I want uh, 12 items, I happen to know that number, every 30 degrees. Okay, So that's what we want to see there, 12 items at 30 degrees. That's going to give us a full circle of lines every 30 degrees. Um, make sure you're 360 to fill, and then you can just hit close. All right, so now I have my circles and I have my lines and we're ready to produce the spiral so I'm going to zoom again way up on that center point and I'm going to come up to the draw and I'm going to again spick, pick spline fit I'm going to start at the center point I'm going to go out and up one intersection out and around if you will out and around, out and around, out and around, out and around, out and around. My screen is very tiny when I make videos, so it fits the screen. And so I have to do a lot of panning here. I'm just holding the middle wheel of the mouse down when I move the screen. Notice it does not interrupt my command, and I'll come out right there, and then I'll just hit enter. And there's my spiral. Again, I'll click on that, and I'll flip it to the object layer. And there we have uh, Archimedes spiral. Okay, So there are a few of the more difficult of the assignments. I'll leave it to you to try and figure these out based on the lecture. Uh, if you missed the lecture, then uh, ask somebody for help, okay? So there you have it. Good luck, and as always, enjoy.